welcome to the last video in the series, Clinical Application of Arterial Blood Gases. Last but not least, oxygenation. One of the most important measured parameters on the blood gas is the PaO2. But what is PaO2? How is it significant? And finally, what are the factors that control PaO2? But first, what PaO2 is not. PaO2 is not the quantity of oxygen available for cellular metabolism. In order to quantify oxygen available, one would need to use the formula for O2 content that you see below and multiply that times the cardiac output. That would be a good topic for another lecture. When oxygen moves from alveoli to blood, capillary blood, it continues to exert a partial pressure. The PaO2 is the measurement of that partial pressure. And the units are in millimeters of mercury. PaO2 then is an indicator of the lung's ability to add oxygen to the blood. So what are some of the factors that cause an increase or decrease in PaO2? The next three slides are a list of some of those factors. Very important to oxygen entering the blood is the surface area for gas. Oxygen is relatively slow diffusing as compared to CO2, and so it requires a large, very large surface area. In fact, the surface area for gas exchange is about 60 square meters or the size of a tennis court. These alveoli must be fully expanded and have matching blood supply. And this is known as VQ matching or ventilation perfusion. Ventilation without blood supply or blood supply without ventilation can lead to hypoxemia or a low PaO2. The next factor affecting oxygenation is the P big AO2 or alveolar oxygen tension. I know you remember this formula barometric pressure minus the pressure of water vapor pressure times the FiO2 and then subtract CO2 divided by 0.8. Assuming barometric pressure is relatively constant Changes in FiO2 then will profoundly affect the P big AO2. A rule of thumb is that over 50%, six times the FiO2 will be roughly equal to the P big AO2 or alveolar oxygen tension. Another factor affecting P little AO2 is the diffuse. One of the things that will affect the diffusing capacity is the thickness of the AC membrane or what does oxygen have to pass through in order to get into the blood? To summarize the factors that are affecting P little AO2, as you can see from the last three slides, there are a lot of factors that have to do with PaO2, and so there's a lot that can go wrong and result in a drop in PaO2. Okay, PaO2 is not the only indicator of oxygen on your blood gas. You also have the SaO2, however, is not a measured parameter on a standard blood gas panel. It's calculated. It's calculated based on the PaO2 and how the machine knows to calculate it is shown. Unless there's a shift in the curve, if the PO2 is 100, the SAT will be 97%. If the PO2 is 60, for example, the SAT will be around 90%. And if the PO2 is 40, the SAT will be around 75%. This is very fundamental information to know and so I'd recommend memorizing this information. And, of course, you know that SaO2 stands for the saturation of hemoglobin with uh, oxygen. And it's measured in terms of a percentage saturation. Because SaO2 depends upon PaO2 first, anything that affects PaO2 will potentially affect SaO2. There are some examples where PaO2 is not affected, but SaO2 is, and this might be in the case of a shift in the curve, a left or right shift due to acidosis, alkalosis, temperature, and so on. More specifically, if the patient is at, the curve will shift to the right. This means for any given PaO2, the saturation will actually be lower on hemoglobin, but that makes more oxygen available to the tissues. Some of the things that might do this, that is, shift it to the right and make more oxygen available, would be acidosis, high temperature, and high CO2. A left shift is just the opposite. For any given PO2, the SAT would be slightly higher, uh, and this happens in alkalosis or cold temperature. Unfortunately, this might act to deprive uh, the tissues of a certain amount of oxygen. 
that will not leave hemoglobin. Okay, let's put it all together. What can we do with this? A common cause of hypoxemia, or low PaO2, is regions of the lung that are poorly ventilated. In other words, VQ mismatch. Since oxygen requires 20 times the surface area than does CO2, oxygen is affected and carbon dioxide is not. An uneven distribution of ventilation with respect to perfusion, as Dr. Shapiro puts it, is also called a shunt. And a low PaO2 due to a shunt is treated with oxygen therapy. Back to the alveolar air equation, this works because you raise the FiO2 and that raises mathematically the partial pressure of alveolar oxygen. Uh, raising the partial pressure of alveolar oxygen in the good alveoli compensates for the low partial pressure of oxygen in the bad alveoli or poorly ventilated alveoli. Realize though that this doesn't always work efficiently. Sometimes patients have refractory hypoxemia. This might happen in a case like pulmonary edema where most alveoli are affected by fluid around the alveoli taking surface. In order to restore the PaO2 in refractory hypoxemia, one may need to use PEEP or CPAP in order to uh, increase the FRC, increase the size of the alveoli so that surface, there's more of a surface area for gas exchange. Increases in FiO2 and addition of positive end expiratory pressure are two methods used to increase the PaO2 and SaO2.